Okay, this is a good introduction to a circular motion question. Here we have a plane on a string. The string is at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical. The plane is in motion, as represented by this dotted line, moving in a circle around and around and around. And the length of the string is 1.5 meters. Now the additional information they provide is the tension in the string itself is 5 newtons. And what we want to start with is trying to figure out what the mass of the airplane is if we know the tension is 5 newtons. Now the key to any of these circular motion questions is to just treat them like dynamics. And with dynamics, our starting point is always Newton's second law in addition to a free body diagram. So Newton's second law, just to remind everybody, when we write it in terms of acceleration, we say this. The acceleration is F net, which is the sum of the forces, divided by the mass. Now the forces have to be added as vectors. So I'll put my little vector symbol across my, above my F. So next step is to label the forces actually acting on the plane. Well, the plane has a force of gravity, which is straight down, and we've already seen that there's a tension that basically moves along the string. Let's draw those in now. So with some quick labeling, the bottom one we're going to call a force of gravity, straight down as usual. So I'll label that FG. And this top one we're calling FT, the tension force, which we know is 5 newtons. It's actually given in the question. 5 newton tension force up top. Now we know that the acceleration is going to be given by the sum of forces divided by the mass. So before we even jump into this, let's figure out what our sum of forces might look like. Now we know that when we have two vectors, we can't just add the numbers together. You have to add them together properly, the tip to tail method. We'll take our two vectors, we'll add them together tip to tail and see what that looks like. Now one more thing before we start, we need to identify which way the plane is accelerating. And this is where it's a little bit different than regular dynamics. In regular dynamics, this might be you know a pendulum or something swinging back and forth. But usually we line up the acceleration in the direction of the swing which is sort of down at an angle along the line of that plane wing, if you will. But in circular motion, the acceleration is actually easier. The acceleration is always directly towards the center of the circle. We say that F net is directly towards the center of the circle, like this. And remember, F net is the sum of the forces. That's what F net represents. All right, now we can start our tip to tail drawing and identify the various sides. So let's move our vectors into position. So let's start with our F net, move that over to the side, like this. Our tension and our gravitational forces have to add together tip to tail. These are the two that have to add together to make my net force. So how does that look? Just give me a second here, I'll grab it. There we go, FT plus FG, tip to tail. So I arrange them tip to tail just like I used to. Has to equal, my resultant in other words, has to be F net, like that. So there's my diagram. Now I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and move my FG symbol over a little bit so that it doesn't clutter up the space. Same with F net down at the bottom. So here's my cleaned up diagram. And we can label our angle. 30 degrees is with respect to the vertical, so it's right in here. There's our 30 degree angle right there. Now because F net is straight towards the center and FG is straight down, we actually have a nice right triangle, which in a sense makes this actually easier than some of our dynamics questions, which typically don't make a nice right triangle. We have to use the cosine law and the sine law. So this one's a little bit simpler. Now we know that one of the sides is 5 newtons. The tension in the string is 5 newtons. Let's label that now. So this side right here is 5 newtons. So here's the triangle we need to solve. Now part A, what is the mass of the plane? So we want to find out what FG is. So it all hinges on this triangle. Well, I've got an angle. I've got a hypotenuse of 5 newtons. FG, according to my triangle, is the adjacent side. You can see here that FG on this side right here is adjacent to my angle of 30 degrees. So I'm going to use cosine. So cosine 30 is adjacent FG over my tension. And we want to solve this for force of gravity so I can determine the mass of the plane. 
So simply multiplying both sides by Ft gives me the following. Fg equals Ft cos 30. Ft is 5 newtons. And if we solve this, 5 newtons times cos 30 is 4.33 newtons. Now remember, Fg is simply mass times gravity, and we're assuming we're on Earth in this question. So I get Mg is 4.33 newtons, dividing both sides by G. I get the mass of the plane equivalent to 0 0.44 kilograms. So there's my mass of the plane.